Hello, I'm John Proxy on channel John of the West, and I'm about to begin a Hive Swap adventure. This is a game by a man called Andrew Hussey, creator of the webcomic Homestuck, which is very popular indeed, or very, it used to be, it's finished now. Uh, and it would take quite a long time to explain that webcomic. In fact, it took quite a long time to explain how Hive Swap came to be and and all the sort of Kickstarter trials and tribulations. Uh, so instead, I I'm just going to click the new button and I'm going to shut up for about a minute. Right, um, as you can probably guess, uh, I've, I've seen that opening cutscene before. Um, that's why my face is positioned on here and not on top of the other icons. In fact, I had a hell of a problem just doing this first minute. But uh, we're here now, it's fine. Um, it's uh, If you don't know what Homestuck is, it's as I said, it's a webcomic. But um, having read the webcomic, you sort of know that you, you need to pay attention to like everything on the screen, which is... You can see it's all completely dense with posters and toys and, well, so instead of just focusing on that straight away, let's read the dialogue. It says, your name is... Sorry, you're going to need a minute. <sighs> okay, you gave yourself a minute to freak out because of the monster. The thing with all the legs and teeth. The one you barely got away from. Minutes up, though. You take a deep breath, let the uncertainty slip away into the toothy, arm-waggling darkness and focus on what you know. Your name is Joey Clare. You live just outside of a town of Haunt Switch. You are, in no particular order, a puzzle solver, a semi-orphan, a dancer of multiple schools, an aspiring veterinarian, and a big sister. So, so the comic of Homestuck, if, if you're unaware, and I'm imagining if that the only reason you'd click on Hive Swap is if you are already a Homestuck fan, but maybe you're not, so I will explain, just in case. Uh, the, the comics are ostensibly about four kids who play a, a computer game that has catastrophic consequences. That is a ridiculous oversimplification, but they all sort of... They sort of parody uh, computer games, um, one of them being point and clicks, uh, and... So they all actually start with this sort of description for each of the characters, although it takes a while for the other characters to be introduced. It's used, it's uh, John Egbert is the first one introduced. Uh, it's always four and six, and they always have these kind of capital letter introductions because it's computer game language. So it being an actual computer game, it's finally appropriate. In fact, the only thing that's not really appropriate is my face being right here. Uh, and I am tempted to take it off because I'm blocking bits of the screen. Anyway, let's carry on with dialogue. Speaking of, that monster, the one that barely missed eating you alive, only you're not thinking about that right now. It might be headed back outside, where your little brother is. You've got to warn him. So, it's interesting to note that obviously Homestuck and Hive Swap and Haunt Switch are all HS, uh, same initial. Uh, don't know why I needed to point that out, but I'm gonna look at stuff. So that is, these posters, they resonate so powerful with the very core of your being. The animals, the magic, the power. They whisper to you in your dreams. Secrets of a better world on the other side of the stars. Now, it's quite important to note that the way the Homestuck stories are told, um, it's told as if you're giving commands 
to the characters. Although that sort of drops after a while, and there's a sort of in-game twist to it. But it's also, um, these, the posters on their bedroom walls are full of, um, foreshadowing and stuff like that. Though it's always only noticeable later on. But, um, it'll be kind of like, ah, oh, it's obvious now. Magic and power. Can't really tell. What's this say? This is. It's the 11th of November. Today started off just like any other day, with another sunrise and the sound of songbirds going hog wild out there in the trees. But their songs have all but stopped. And now, there's something else going hog wild out there. You don't know what it is, but it ain't birds. And it ain't sure. It, it sure ain't as heck. Ain't hogs. Oh. It's easy for you to say, John. And it's... I can mark the calendar if I wanted to. Right. Um, I've forgotten what SN stands for. The door to your, possibly, snake monster occupied hallway. You really need to let Jude know that that monster might be coming after him. So it's Jude and Joey. Hmm. So they um... I'm pretty sure this is set in the same universe as Homestuck. I can't, I can't quite remember. I know it's 1994 because it says that on the page. Uh, but because of the way Homestuck is told, it's sometimes not entirely clear when or where somewhere is because of, let's say, shenanigans. Uh, let's turn the light on. That'll help. So... There is a computer there. Let's see if we, we could probably send someone a message. So we can look at these. It's easy to make your very own cake or something like that. You were really excited to get this for your birthday last year, but you ran out of baking stuff pretty quick. You could use regular sugar and flour or whatever, but it's not like you have those things just sitting around. Who does? Honestly. People with mums, you guess. So I, 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 can't, I can't bake. You're all out of the baking stuff. And you're not too busted up about it, though. You're pretty tough. Okay, I've got these buttons here. And whatever that is. Oh, that's my, gonna be my, um... I was about to say inventory. No, it's, a uh, philodex, I believe, is the terminology. What is this? No. Oh, that's a microwave, of course. Your babysitter gave you this for your birthday. Joey, she said, this wizard is the best. He lives in this little wizardy orb, just swimming in spells and glitter. He will protect you. Look, he's doing it right now. Your babysitter loves wizards, obviously. She's pretty great. So yeah, um, her babysitter, presumably then, is one of the two characters that loves wizards in Homestuck, which would be either, oh, it's been a while, I should know this, should be pretty obvious. Um, I'll come back to that. Oh, come on, John, you've forgotten the characters for Homestuck? Mum won this award around the same age as you for being the best at ballet. It's pretty. Who loves wizards? There's two people. They basically have the same name. They're mother and daughter. Sort of. Sort of. Shenanigans and all that. Um, you've got more pressing concerns right now than the book report you have to hand in on Monday. Besides, none of the books are appropriate choices for book report. According to your teachers, your teachers seem oddly fixated on award-winning books where beloved dogs are introduced and then inevitably die. Oh dear. Uh, you're, you kind of hate your teachers sometimes. See, that's my... That's what I'd call... Um, would call... Foreshadowing. Because I did see a dog. Uh, dogs and cats are... Common motif of the, the universe. Damn, what's their name? I know it's 4-6. <laughs> it's John, Jade, Dave... John J. Dave. Oh my word. Uh, Ro ah! It's either Roxy or Rose who's the babysitter then, presumably. That's the ballet award. Okay, what's all this junk down here? I'm actually going to press on the computer in a second. Uh, what about all these toys? They should be pretty safe on the shelf, which is the point of shelves, you suppose. The bed. This is a raised and cushioned platform where you spend several hours a day unconscious and hallucinating. 
usually while the majority of other people on the continent are also doing the same thing. A bed, I believe. Um, oh no, the computer's there. What the hell is this? Ah. Shouldn't be trying to interact with the fourth wall after all. So I can look in there. This is where you keep your clothes. You consider your fashion statement to be fun and comfortable. Try to model, model yourself on Clarissa. Ah, Clarissa. She really does explain quite a few things. Except, of course, precisely where she gets her clothes and how she manages to look great all the time. <laughs> oh, wow. A Clarissa. <laughs> um, reference. Um, of course. Uh, Clarissa Explains It All is this, played by Melissa Joan Hart, who's also... Um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Which I imagine is uh, the point of this game. Uh, your babysitter got this junior veterinarian's medikit. It's kind of important to you. So you think you'll leave it here for now. It would really bust you up if something happened to it. So let's look. Puppy Surprise is having puppies! How many? That's the surprise! Puppy Surprise! Puppy Surprise! I don't know what, that's, what that is. Ah! Whenever you look at this thing, the song from the commercial runs through your head like the snake monster on that autumn afternoon. It's a great place to stash your keepsakes where they s stay as safe as a teen hiding in her bedroom from a snake monster. Uh, we could search through it. You reach inside the expect expectant plush canine and... Puppy Surprise is having puppies! Ooh. That looks like it could be important. Hang on. How does this work? Right. This is our silly decks. You try to engage the keys in some sort of twisted Escher-esque impossibility wherein they may unlock each other in an infinite loop, but it fails. Right, um, in, in the Homestuck comic, just in case you are unaware of the Homestuck comic, the, uh, the start of the story is actually quite a lot of in inventory-based shenanigans, and the story doesn't really pick up for, like, quite a while, to be honest, uh, because the Silidex has rules where, like, you can only touch the first one, and he keeps them having to use other items. It's very funny, um, but I'm guessing they're not going to do that. I just wanted to look at it, to be honest. Uh, and I don't quite know how. Oh, look, there's stuff outside. Uh, anyway. Am I not allowed to take the dogs? Right. You can sort of see the sides of the screen that, um... Oh, right. I, I don't know what I've done there. I don't know how to get off the screen. Um, yes. Well, this is embarrassing.
Uh, right, so I started the game again, and look, that uh, button there is in the front rather than the back, and I have the button. I have the option to look at things now. So I think this is my fault because I'm forcing full screen. Um, I'm forcing windowed full screen so I can have my face in front. So, ah yes, no one ever think to look for your precious diary key inside a plush mother dog. Least of all your brother, who was upset he didn't get one of the puppies. Jude can be pretty melodramatic. Speaking of precious keys, there's also a beautiful old trinket that used to belong to Mum. You have no idea what it is, but looking at it reminds you of her. Honestly, you're not sure who you'd be comfortable leaving. You're not sure you'd be comfortable leaving it here with everything that's going on. So I'm just gonna look at that as well. Okay, now I'm just gonna get. Uh, so you, while you're at it, you think you maybe keep this beautiful heirloom of your mum's close. Just a feeling, a deep, inexplicable, impossible to ignore feeling. So there we go. I can save my game, which I did earlier off screen, which you didn't see. Um, and I do have a button that swaps with the little brother, I believe. Oh, let's not do that just yet then. So can I... I can! I can now... This will open your diary. It's key to all your most private thoughts and fantasies, so... Shh. There's really nothing juicy in there. You wish you'd led a life full of secrets worth coveting. But then again, maybe you're about to. Okay. It's beautiful, but you couldn't risk putting it on a chain to wear as a necklace or anything in case it got lost. You'd lead a pretty rough and tumble life. Well, you have today anyway. So, hang on. I don't get how the... Now it's a finger and not an eye. Ooh, it's... It's one of these. This is Sir Bappy Pawswatter, your beloved Manthro chap. You, t you tend to his fussy whims and needs when you trouble to imagine what they might be. What a daring dream to combine the finest qualities of the animal kingdom with the nobility of the human animals. Wait, you mean humanity? Oh god, that's like several references in one. Um... What a daring dream to combine the finest qualities of the animal kingdom with the nobility of animals is a line from Homestuck, sp specifically from a character called Jade. Uh, you get that line when you look at her posters on the wall, which are anthropomorphic witch animals, basically. Um, but that's, the human animals are actually connected to Dave, uh, uh, Dave's brother, which I've forgotten the name of. Um, he's called Bro for quite a lot of the comic. Um, Anyway, so Bappy Porswater will have to tend to his own fussy whims and needs for a while. You've got a lot of crap on your plate right now. Um, uh, beanbags, I'm making a big comeback lately. It beats sitting on the floor, and that's all you can really ask of a beanbag. So, let's look out the window. Oh my word, I accessed another corner of the room. <laughs> so it's all, it's all, the stories keep happening. Okay, I'm not quite finished with this other room, to be honest. So. One day you hope to be a veterinarian. And then you can be one of the caring... Then you can be the one caring for fuzzy-faced baby critters. So when someone catches you in the act of snuggling them all and tells you to take the hike, you can flash your vet badge and, and say that you're here on professional medical business. And then I'll have to take the hike, not you. So yeah, animal doctor. Let's uh, the, the, what's this? You try to remember if Clarissa ever got in any jams like this. You have so much in common. Annoying little brother, computer in the room, um, second story bedroom. Uh, as much as you hate to admit it, Clarissa's life deviates from yours in a number of vertices. Her parents were around. She had a cool friend who was a boy, but not her boyfriend. No monsters in the yard, etc. Yeah, so it's apparently, I think it's 1994. What is this button? It lets me save. Well, I shall save again. So let's try the computer. Your modem always makes a mighty racket logging you on. Probably not worth riling up. Any hallway snakes to surf your sights right now is not like there's much new to see anyway. You're sure that Jude would have let you know if anyone was in your web, web ring and had updated their sites. No messages then. 
Okay, let's check out this corner of the room. So yeah, um, and you might think I'm spending too much time looking at items, but that's that's clearly a feature of the game, looking at stuff. Um, so let's look out the window, shall we? Ooh. Yikes, more of them. Gent gentrification is the real monster. Blistering social commentary aside, you sincerely hope that you and your brother aren't killed and eaten by these eyeless horrors. Poor puppy. If that icky, snaky thing hurt her, well, you'd use your budding veterinarian skills to patch her up and make it all better. But you'd also be pretty angry. Right now, she doesn't seem to want to come out of her doghouse. You don't blame her. Uh... It'd be nice if those monsters were as weirded out by that weird skull fountain as you are. Unfortunately, that thing is probably monster cheek. Looks like Jude is scurried up to his treehouse to get away from that thing. Unsurprisingly, he acts like it's it, like it's his mission control room up there, as if a goofy kid legitimately has any secret business of that sort. Uh, outrageous! You're not allowed up there, he says. To which you reply, you'd rather step on a rake than set foot in his rickety little nerd hut. You school him so often, you really should be pulling in a teacher's salary. Um, you briefly muse on the metaphorical significance of the flashing light. What could it represent? The past? The future? America? It's your stupid brother. You need to get in touch with him. Well, he might be getting in touch with you. Right, let's go back, which I now have an option to do. Lovely. Um, there's Hungry Hungry Hippos and some My Little Pony, uh, which is kind of important. Um, so there's um, a... S Ooh. Okay, the game is only available in Japan. There's, But there's this kid at school who says his uncle worked at a games company. And he says, gets to play... And he says, gets to play all sorts of secret games before they even come out here. He runs off a... At the mouth, like, why? I, I can't speak. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna take a sip of this tea. Hmm, lovely, lovely, lovely tea. And I'm gonna start that again. This game is only available in Japan, but there's this kid at school who says his uncle works at the games company, and he says gets to play all sorts of secret games before they even come out here. He runs off at the mouth like this. He has has all this insider information and sources inside the game companies, but honestly, you think he's just desperate for attention. You tend to ignore him and fo focus on the more pleasant things, like the super cool poster, Second Mom Rules. So, um, that's a reference to Mother 2, uh, which I've not played, but I know is an inspiration to not just Homestuck, but to... Oh, I've forgotten the name now. They've all got the same double-barreled names. It's, um... Uh, Earthbound? Well, yeah, because Mother 2 is Earthbound, right? And that's where the pun of Homestuck Earthbound comes from, I believe. But, um... Uh, come on, it should be on your list of games. Can I... Oh, I can. I'm going to scroll down the list of games and see if I can remember the very obvious other reference. Which we will probably see. <gasps> the dogs look the same as well now that I think about it. Uh, what's it called, John? It's really obvious. Um, Undertale, that's it. Yeah. Undertale and, and Homestuck both take inspirations from uh, Earthbound, which that is an Earthbound poster. This is a Bubsy poster? What could possibly go wrong? That's what Bubsy would say if he were here. He'd never stop saying it. You'd hear it in your head. <laughs> Forever echoing like screams echo across still water. Yeah, uh, Bubsy had issues. Uh, it was before they realised, you know what, maybe they shouldn't repeat this, literally the same line every single time you click on something. So, Star Avenue. I don't know what that's a reference to. Ginger Rogers. Gosh, she's really something. Greatest tap dancer who ever clattered gracefully across the screen. Probably. No, wait, definitely. Still kicking. Okay, that might actually be a genuine thing. Ginger Rod Rogers is true. And this is the uh, second reference to dance. This is what exactly? 
the bounty hunter's advice for dealing with monsters would be probably to shoot them or change your shape or both at once. She's cool, but pretty difficult to emulate. We can have a... Who is that? I can't tell. It's somebody fighting a dragon. Hmm. So this is obviously a never-ending story poster. The story keeps happening! Just look at that childlike empress. She sure looks pretty pleased with herself for someone who's only in the movie for about five minutes. So yeah, there's references to the never-ending story in Homestuck. Uh, this is a Problem Sleuth poster, I believe. Uh, you love Block Hustle. The game about descending columns that disappear as lines are filled. But uh, you can only find a poster for the American box art. Oh yeah. It's a Tetris poster that looks like a noir uh, thing. Anyway, what's this? Oh, that's more than enough of that. I believe that was Bubsy. Um, you love your video game console. You're a computer games enthusiast at heart, but you can't help but enjoy that the tactical sensation of a controller in your hand as you fight evil and save animals and etc. Lots of etc. Wonder if she likes Sonic then. Um, a prodigious collection of titles for your console's hungry cartridge-shaped mouth. All the best ones are here. Well, all the ones you have to own are here. You could spend all day listing them. There's Bubsy. There's Mentioning Bubsy's made you feel a little queasy, so you think you'll stop there. You might go lie down for a bit, actually. You just saved before fighting the final boss, which means you'll need to budget several hours to fight through its various forms and anti-forms and transformations. And look, you've got a lot on your plate right now. Oh, I think I know who she's related to now because uh, I'm looking at the uh, pictures so here is the uh... see oh I've got one of those pens um, everyone does John that's why it's in the game this little girl what this little girl there she's destined for big things big hopes big fears big worries and big loneliness now hold on pull yourself together what would your mum say if she knew you were thinking like that you really wish you knew since she's been gone, you've seen less and less of power over the years. Guess he had greener pastures to move on to, or bluer beauties. Alright, so... So her dad is Jake Harley, otherwise known as Grandpa. It's kind of complicated, uh, and I don't know who she is. I'm imagining she's new. So... You usually don't have much to record in here on account of being of the humdrum life you lead, but you think today will be a different story. Maybe you should take a moment to record a note now, just in case this is your last chance to set down your final words before your tragic demise at the hands of the horrible snaky thing. Well, I've got a key. You unlock and open your diary. Nice. Juicy secrets, here you come. Except they're just your boring secrets. So you don't care. Let's have a look anyway. You, you, uh, you, uh, I don't, that's right in here. Maybe something from your past will shed some light on today's terror mysteries. With some little detail mentioned offhand and forgotten. The key kicking off the casual cascade of connections and terminates in a cat catastrophe of snake monsters. Let's read that again because that's kind of a, an impressive line, isn't it? The key kicking off the casual cascade of connections that terminates the catastrophe of snake monsters. That should be the name of the t episode, shouldn't it? Uh, that's quite a long title, though. Um, April 13th, 1994. Dear Diary. Ho oh, hum. Nothing much happened today. I tried to make some new friends at school to maybe expand our social circle beyond just me and Jude's friends all the time. Wait. Is it weird to call my brother's friends my social circle? Oh well, you know what I mean, diary. I don't have any friends I can really call mine, so I'm trying to branch out. I guess it's better than calling them my web ring. The kids at school are jerks, though. They call me a poser when I try to talk to them about the games I like and stuff. 
between you and me, I think a bunch of the kids at the school might be... evil? Jeez. Now I'm sounding all paranoid like my brother. They're just up to no good. I can feel it. Joey. June 12th, 1994. Dear Diary. Whew. First day of summer vacation. I, can f I can't wait to break from all those clowns at school. Sometimes I think I really need a vacation from humanity. Joey. October 25th, 1994. Dear Diary, I can't believe I haven't recorded an entry since the beginning of last summer. Needless to say, I've been back to school for a while now. Next summer can't come soon enough. Unhappy face. I came home to a drunk babysitter again today. Sure is some quality ad adult supervision we youngsters are getting around here. She means well enough, though. Oh, look, there's a picture of her. Okay. Haven't heard from Power in weeks. Uh, last we saw of him, he popped in the house to drop off more of those stupid mummies and globes or whatever, then skipped off to go on more adventures. What a bozo. Also, how lame is it that he made us call him Pa instead of Dad while we were growing up? I miss Mom. Joey. Unhappy face. Unhappy face. If this is to be the last entry in your diary, then by gum you're going to scare the bejesus out of, out of whoever finds it once you're snake chow. November 11th, 1994. Dear Diary, forgive my hasty and nervous scribbling. I'm kind of scared, but maybe also a bit excited. Anyway, can't talk much now. There's a sly and cunning monster on the prowl. Possibly hungry for kid meat, too. So I've got to... Okay, I don't have a darn clue what I have to do, but I'll fill you in later once I do it. Joey. Satisfied you've done your duty vis-a-vis -vis posterity in case the words... Worst should happen. You relock your diary and hide the key, key again, safe and sound. Haha. <laughs> All right, that's that's kind of clever, because it's going to force me to keep updating the diary. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to keep these episodes at about half an hour each. Uh, so as soon as I figure out what I'm going to name the episode, I think Joey Claire is probably a good idea. Uh, then I'll let you go. Um, yeah. Well, I've been John Fox on Tunnel John Rice, and I've been having a hive swap adventure. And this is Joey Clare, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Farewell.